Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. This is the final episode of our spring 2017 season, and we've got another great show lined up for you. We're headed up to the Mulberry River in the Ozark National Forest, gonna do a little bit of smallmouth bass fishing. But first, we're headed up near the headwaters of the Mulberry River to show you a very important habitat restoration project that the Game and Fish Commission just completed with several of our conservation partners. You know, the number one source of pollution in Arkansas streams is actually sediment. When vegetation is removed from stream banks, trees, shrubs, and that sort of thing, and we get heavy rainfall events or flooding, all that dirt washes downstream and degrades aquatic habitat. This project is gonna help improve habitat on the Mulberry River for fisheries, as well as fishermen for years to come. All that and this week's winner of a free hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day, Academy. It's your license to a good morning. Your license to solitude. Your license to teach, to celebrate, to brag, to bond. It's your license to party. The Arkansas Game and Fish Fishing License. Your license to fun. Get yours today at agfc.com and let the fun begin. The natural state abounds with outdoor splendor, but perhaps nothing is more beautiful and tranquil than our state's Ozark Mountain streams. One of the most scenic stretches is the Mulberry River in northwest Arkansas, a stream popular for its fishing and also as a destination for whitewater paddling. But when heavy rains come and the stream turns into a torrent, rising waters can cause damage to the land that borders the river. Kathy Brown was losing land rapidly on the banks of the Mulberry, causing extensive damage to the land where her family has lived for more than a century. My family came to Arkansas in the 1700s from a little town in Virginia. They came over here and settled in the mountains here. We've been here ever since. My great great uncle, Nathaniel Campbell, uh, got the land from a land grant the, from Ulysses S. Grant and we still have that grant. I have lost so much land, and I'm telling you, when you've got tons of dirt going down with trees in that dirt, it's a force to be reckoned with. The beauty of the creek isn't anymore, it's ugly. You know, people come here and have took many pictures through time. I leave my land open to the public. I don't care because I think beautiful things should be enjoyed. If we want to keep our wild and scenic rivers looking wild and scenic, they need maintenance. A call from the U.S. Forest Service set the plans in motion, and the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission's stream team stepped in to help. The Forest Service came to me about a year and a half ago and asked if the Game and Fish stream team program would help in the design of this project. Several years ago, the river channel used to be right over there where you see those young um, sycamores and river birches growing. Channel used to be up on that side. And over time, um, this bank has eroded and eroded and eroded. Ms. Brown has lost two or three acres of pasture land here. The goal was not only to fix the erosion, but also to improve fish habitat. The Mulberry River is a favorite smallmouth stream. And what happens over time is the stream channel gets wider and shallower. So it increases your water temperature when you lose your riparian vegetation and when the stream gets wider and shallower. And so we want to improve um, the smallmouth fish habitat in this river, as well as um, darters and mussels and, and other aquatic species. 
smallmouth in particular, they like clean, cool mountain streams, okay? Um, so we wanna keep this water clean, and by reducing sediment, you're gonna keep the, the cloudiness out of the water and the, the dirt out of the water from smothering fish eggs. That's ultimately what happens, is this soil washes downstream and covers up the, the fish eggs and chokes them out and, it, and certain fish are sight feeders so they can't see through that cloudy water so you need good clean clear water so they can find their prey to survive. The overall project is to reduce sediment, um, create a more diverse fish habitat and help the landowners, the U.S. Forest Service is involved. Um, it's a big community project. The next step was devising a plan that would solve these problems in the most cost-effective way possible. The original plan is to put rock veins that point upstream down through here, and there's gonna be six of them. They're 60 feet long, and they come out a 30-degree angle from this bank line with a 10% slope. And uh, that was the original plan, but with this additional erosion just since December 2015, we're gonna to have to build a longitudinal dike in here and kind of bring this back out another 30 or 40 feet and then add in those rock veins. The design of these rock structures is very important. The keys to prevent them from being flanked, the angle, the slope, the size of the rock is very important and how they're put in place. We always start on the lower end or the downstream side um, and lay those rocks in compression with the flow of water. Over time, land will actually build back out towards the river and this, this whole bank will be stabilized. And also, once we get done building the veins and doing the, the rock structures, installing all the rock, we're gonna plant a 60-foot buffer along through here with native trees, shrubs, grasses, because we're missing a riparian zone right here. You see how much sunlight we've got now. There's no shade on the water and there's no root system, deep root systems to hold this soil together. So we're gonna do a 60 foot buffer here. We're gonna help Ms. Brown with a, a barbed wire fence so the cattle can't graze this riparian area and they can't walk up and down the banks and trample it and cause further erosion. It's complex in that you're dealing with nature. It's not like building a shopping center or a home where you can excavate and build a perfectly plumb level uh, concrete slab and go up with your walls and everything. You're dealing with a powerful force here that you have no control over. I'm pretty confident in the, the calculation of rock. We're gonna need about 2,200 tons to do this project. And it's gonna take uh, roughly two weeks or at least 80 hours with two machines to do this project. So, how will the plan come together? After the break, we'll jump ahead a couple of months as the restoration project gets underway. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. It's July of 2016, and construction on the Mulberry River Stream Bank Stabilization Project is now in full swing. You know, most people would think the simplest thing would be to just come in here and slope this bank on a two-to-one slope and rip-wrap it from one end to the other. Well, number one, that looks ugly and engineered. And the, the rock veins steer the water back towards the center of the stream channel and it creates slack water against the eroding bank. Veins only work where you have moving water. So nine, 10 months out of the year, you've got a pretty good flow of water up against this bank. And so it's going to steer that water back towards the center of the channel. And you use less rocks in veins versus rip wrapping the entire thing. So it's a more cost effective method and it does a better job overall. For this project to work, several agencies had to join forces and work as a team. This property is owned by Ms. Brown. It's private land. 
Forest Service surrounds it so it benefits the Forest Service and the people of Arkansas. Game and Fish, I did the design on this. And then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, through a SARP grant, which is the Southeast Aquatic Resource Partnership, um, they provided the majority of the funding for this project. And also, not only did they provide most of the funding, but they sent um, equipment operators from Mississippi and Alabama and rented the four machines that is installing the rock today. He gave us the coordinates. We looked it up on Google Earth. It didn't take us very long to figure out we wanted to be part of it. It's a very special project. We could tell just from Google Earth the amount of silt and sediments that they were losing off of this bank every year. We jumped on the opportunity just because of the magnitude of material that was being lost and, and the, what we could accomplish here in, in such a short period of time. My role in this has been, or, or I guess my interest in this has been all the sediments that we're going to be able to keep out of the stream with this project. Fortifying the bank like we're doing is going to just keep the, the uh, the soil from eroding, keep that out of the stream as, as uh, sediment that would otherwise move downstream. And we, uh, we have Forest Service property just downstream of Ms. Brown's uh, property here. So we want to keep all the sediment out. Uh, not all of it, some sediment is natural, some erosion is natural, but this is an unnatural situation. It's just not healthy for the river. The crew went to great lengths to avoid unnecessary disturbance of the natural aesthetics on this section of the Mulberry River, blending the new boulders from another location with existing rocks in the stream bed. You can see, we know where the old stream channel was, and we've diver diverted the water through the old stream channel so we can work in a dry stream bed. We think in two years you won't hardly see these, these things. Nobody wants to come put this rock that's not native to this river system. We don't want to do that. It's just, in this case, our river rock wasn't large enough. It was round. We needed three four foot diameter rocks that were jagged, that would really lock in together. So we had to bring in this rock. And, and there's a, somewhere around 2,500 tons of rock. It's a lot, but we've, we've done a very good job on hiding it, mixing in river rock. Once the rock veins were complete, it was on to the next phase, improving the strength of the riverbank. In the fall, students from the nearby OARC school planted native trees, shrubs, and grasses along the riverbank. As their root systems develop, they'll keep the stream bank in place, reducing the loss of sediment downstream during periods of flooding or high water. It didn't take long to put this bank stabilization project to the test. This is video from April 29, 2017. Heavy spring rainfall led to widespread flooding across the state, and the popular swinging bridge leading to Kathy Brown's property was washed away. We recently returned to the project site to see how the bank fared against the high water. The veins were still intact, working as designed, and were beginning to fill in with rocks and divert the river channel away from the stream bank and back toward its natural course and the new vegetation held fast and was spreading into new areas and providing additional bank stability. For those who worked on the project, results like this make the job extremely rewarding. I love this. It's my wife, my daughter, and then my job. I've got the best job in the world. It's pretty easy to see. Look where I'm sitting now. I'm in a beautiful mountain, Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. Pristine river. We're doing our best to keep it pristine keep it clean, keep it healthy. I love what I do because at the end of the day, I can see something. You know, I can see, okay, that we have improved the water quality, we have changed the landscape, and what you do here, you don't realize it, but it affects everybody downstream. And we all live downstream as somebody. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Zimmerman Sports Center on South University in Little Rock. We're not asking you to wear it everywhere. Just please, wear a life jacket when you're on the water this summer.
The Mulberry River begins its 70-mile journey high in the Ozarks, not far from the headwaters of popular Arkansas streams like the Buffalo, Kings, and White Rivers. But the Mulberry has a character all its own. From the milky green cast of its water to the intimate seclusion created by tight turns, giant boulders, and willow strainers, this Ozark stream provides a unique outdoors experience. With a steep gradient and abundant rock gardens, the mulberry is immensely popular among whitewater paddlers. But when the river slows down in warmer and drier times of year, it also provides excellent fishing for smallmouth bass and feisty sunfish. We paddled and fished a short stretch with game and fish biologist Matthew Irvin, one of the agency's Arkansas Stream Team coordinators and the person responsible for a major habitat restoration project just a few miles upstream. Because of its seclusion in the Ozark National Forest, it's no wonder the U.S. government has designated the Mulberry one of the country's wild and scenic rivers. It's yet one more reason to appreciate the outdoor life in the natural state. Hey, we want to thank you for tuning in to Arkansas Wildlife this spring. We'll be re-airing these 13 episodes throughout the summer, and then we'll be back in the fall with an all-new season of Arkansas Wildlife. We hope to see you then. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at agfc.com slash Arkansas Wildlife TV and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Michael Jones from Conway. Congratulations and thanks for watching.